welcome <laughs> welcome back tribe from the north oh, you need more energy man <laughs> sorry <laughs> welcome back tribe from the north brave and bold to the official unofficial podcast of your idaho vandals and the vandals and the vandals billions whatever it is Really? Of the Big Sky Podcast yeah, Network, nice. I am your host Martin Heemstra with Chris in the background and my guests, the Splash, <laughs> the Splash Sisters, Taylor Pierce and Michaela Friends. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, hello. This is this is exciting. We have the Splash Sisters on. Any more energy going? <laughs> We got all time <laughs> Vandal greats on the show today. Probably our biggest interview we've had. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys. I'm honored. Yeah, I feel yeah. very honored. <laughs> yeah, just God. I, I'm I know I'm excited about this. Martin <laughs> has been like I'm trying to get like, this happen for like a year and a half. So it's finally yeah, happening. I know we're excited. Like, if the, it's been like whenever like if they're doing this, I am wanting to be part of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> When the Splash Sisters say yes, I am going to be on. I don't care what they have to call them. That's what it's been like for me. Yeah, I'm Martin is probably not at it. Took the whole day off work, I bet. <laughs> I wish I could take I, you, we probably took the whole day off work, huh? Well, I yeah. wish I could. Well, rightfully that. so, rightfully so. Um, <laughs> Taylor, Michaela, what have you guys been up to? I mean, this, this pandemic of a summer that we've got going on here. Yeah. Well, we were supposed to be together playing <laughs> Australia right now. Um, yeah, that kind of went south. We're just hanging at home. We actually got to see each other um, for a couple weeks uh, just recently. So we did get to see each other, which was nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were both disappointed that we, <laughs> we weren't getting to go to Australia. Hey, I was there. I was yeah, I there. actually was there. I never actually I got four months. <laughs> It is winter down there, but like how it's not really like winter though, right? Like it's still probably in like the 70s. Um, it's like a California winter, so <laughs> it, it rains and it gets, I mean, it gets a little pretty, pretty chilly at night, like in the 40s and stuff, but it doesn't get lower than that. So it wasn't bad. It rained a lot though by the time I left, which was, I didn't think I would mind it, but I really, I did. I really. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, uh, this episode is brought to you like every episode by who, Martin? <laughs> Ain't nothing like cracking a Montucky cold snack and that ultra refreshing light beer born in the majestic Big Sky Country. The best part is when you crack a snack, you're giving back. Montucky cold snack donates 8% of all profits back to local causes. Even right here in Idaho, supporting organizations like the CD CW Hogs and Idaho Food Bank. Yeehaw, that's friggin' awesome. Uh, <laughs> Montucky Cold Snacks, the Light American Logger for Powwow Rippers, Gator Wranglers, Pony Riders, and Badass Do Gooders. Visit MontuckyColdSnacks.com today to find out how to get yo at ya ass some snacks. Get ya ass some snacks. All right, around the bar. This is where we get to ask you guys a bunch of questions, um, and there's nothing you can really do about it. So, great. <laughs> so nervous. It's not that bad. <laughs> uh, Martin, Martin, who? What do you want to ask first? So I was kind of like for Michaela. I was kind of curious. Like, what was your first? Professional? What was your like? What was life and what was like your first year in Luxembourg like? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was how it, really how great. Do you pronounce your, how, do, how do you pronounce the the team name you were part of? AB? AB Conkren. Okay. Yeah, it was really, really great. Um, it's a really small country. It's like you drive 15 minutes this way, you're in France. You drive 15 minutes that way, you're in Belgium. Like, it's you just have access to, like, so many different cultures and countries. So that was really cool about it. And, I mean – I got to play basketball, so I was happy. Yeah, um, about that. yeah but I really loved it. I am actually going to go back. Um, hopefully soon. We'll see. But I'm going to go back and play for another club there. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's the smallest country in Europe, isn't it? Because, like, I've seen things where people, like, walk the whole distance of it in, like, a day. Yeah, I think it's, like, well, 
I want to say it's the second smallest. I don't know if that's right because there's another country. It's called Liechtenstein, oh, Liechtenstein. that's so tiny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess Vatican City too is technically a country. But. Yeah, like Luxembourg Weird. is so small. Like the farthest I traveled for a game was like 30 minutes. <laughs> So it was, it's pretty nice though. And you never have to stay in a hotel. You never have to get on a plane. It's a little different than like playing wazoo every single yeah, week. Every exactly. Week. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I know one thing I'm, I'm kind of curious for both of you. Um, why Idaho? I mean, I know obviously by the time you guys joined the program, it started really rolling. Obviously you guys helped take it to a whole different level, but I mean, what was that, what attracted you or is there more behind the scenes that, you know, it's always interesting when we talk to other players, like how they ended up at the University of Idaho. Yeah. You got it or you want me to go first? <laughs> you go, Tay. Um, I think for me, I chose Idaho because I wanted to get away from California. I wanted to experience college away from home and like not being able to see my parents every weekend and learning how to be an adult. Um, that was like step one in figuring out I didn't want to go to school anywhere close to home. And then pretty much as cliche as it sounds, when I went on my, um, first visit to Idaho, I just fell in love with everything. I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to like Idaho at all. I, I went because the coaches kept asking me to come on a visit. So I was like, all right, I'm here. I guess I'll go. Um, and I just loved everything about it. The coaching staff, the girls, the entire city of Moscow, which is exactly what I was looking for and turned out to be the right decision, I think. <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of had a similar experience, except I didn't want to go far from home. That was kind of my um, my big thing was that I did want like to see my parents every weekend, and obviously they came to almost every game. So I was really lucky. Um, but it was kind of same for me. I came on my visit and just kind of like fell in love. I feel like you kind of just get a feeling where you like know and you just like the girls were so amazing. The coaches were and I just felt like like I belonged there. And so I just kind of knew from my visit that like Idaho was where I wanted to go. That's awesome. I mean, that's why I ended up there. Just felt, felt like home. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of get a feeling right <laughs> some moscow vibes yes exactly <laughs> vibes <laughs> um, kind of going backtrack kind of piggybacking off the moscow vibes thing what is it you guys is the, what is it you miss most about moscow or is there one particular thing about moscow you miss right well, it's like the university or just the city <laughs> yeah. or if you want to do a separate <laughs> Um, yeah, I think like the food places, <laughs> well, obviously, like the people in the school uh, and like basketball, like all of that, but just Moscow itself. Like, I think we just have so many good memories, like going out to eat and like, mm -hmm. you know, there's just Huckleberry zucchini bread. Like <laughs> you can't get that anywhere else. And it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tay and I had to do a little like food tour. We went to we went to Moscow like two weeks ago or something, and we were only there for like a day. And so we went to like all of our favorite places all in one day. It was overwhelming. Yeah. So like, what are the stops? Then? It was really ridiculous. Well, I think my number one is Breakfast Club. Okay. Mm. Okay. What about you, Tay? This is such a hard question. I know. <laughs> Um, well, obviously, if we could just divide it into like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like I'm going to breakfast club for breakfast. <laughs> if we're talking lunch, I there's too many oh, there, you know, in there. The lunch, where are we going for dinner? Lodgepole. Oh, yeah, okay. oh. you don't hear that answer a lot. That's cool, though. You should. Yes, so the pork chop, the pasta, the burger. Years and I've never been to Lodge Pole. I kind of you're missing that. out, Tyler. I mean, it's on a college budget, though. That is a hard place to go frequently. Yeah, yeah. It's a one thing you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's when that's your parents fair. come up and they want to. Yeah. 
You had a good Spring game. Weekend or homecoming. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. Fuck. laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so what's what's the order at the Breakfast Club then? You you both were Breakfast Clubbers. Uh, oh yeah. Well, we ate there Saturday mornings for our pregame meal every single Saturday morning. And kind of like the thing is, is you have to get the same order all four years. Mm-hmm. What works? So I, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. I right. rule, but I I stuck with it. The whole <laughs> and I was so freaking tired of it, but yeah. It's just, yeah. I switched it up a few times. The kitchen sink, the breakfast club, the home style. Oh, home style every time. Oh, I'm sorry. Five pounds, ham, um, over easy eggs, and huckleberry zucchini bread. I never got tired of huckleberry zucchini bread. Never. No. That's just impossible. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, so look, I, I even know it's been a year now since you both stopped, graduated, slash, not with the team. Is that right, or am I it's been missing a year? Two years, right? It's been two. We graduated in nineteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this Let's, will be our second year coming up. Okay. Without I know you're probably still close to the close to the close to everybody on the team, but I was kind of curious, what's it like, what's it been like following as like, as an alumni, if it's been different for both of you, or has it been pretty much like you're still there kind of just talking to the players still? Um, I mean, I still, I still talk to a lot of them and you never really like lose your relationship with them. You're still joking around and all that, but you definitely don't know like the ins and outs and what goes on in practice. And yeah. there's a lot of little things that you miss out on. And obviously that's going to happen when you're not there. You don't see what's going on. But, I mean, if there's ever anything, like, big and anybody needs advice, they've come to me. They've probably come to Mike before, too, just kind of looking for someone who knows the system but doesn't really know what's going on to offer a different kind of perspective. But, you know, you're still, I'm still super close to them. still joke around a lot with, like, Gina and Allison and all those. They're a bunch of clowns. So <laughs> we still send each other memes on Twitter all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the same kind of relationship I would have with them, too. Um, it's a little different. Like, now you're just kind of a fan. You just only see, like, the game stuff, and you hear a little bit about what goes on, but not a lot. Um, but it's been kind of fun. I swear I get more nervous, like, for them mm-hmm. watching than I got, like, playing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely get more nervous. Well, like, you don't have a game plan. You don't know, like, what they're trying to do. I'm like, I need to be in uh, the scouting. Here. Like, why are we guarding screens this way? Like, who are we letting shoot? I, yeah. It's just not knowing everything because you don't know why they do certain things. But yeah. in your head, you're like, they have to do those. I don't know why, but they have to do those things. Yeah. <laughs> so, Taylor, I got, I got a question for you. So, mm-hmm. um, at my work, we have this big, like, four TV set in media wall and we put on the i think it was state farm did the three point and dunk contest yeah. that you were a part of got literally all over seattle everybody's like what are you watching like oh <laughs> there's this girl from idaho that can shoot the ball lights out and participating Ooh. so we got we got like ballard on like i think it was like a thursday or friday night i remember like people yeah, were stopping at a window and like yeah and we got it on this big screen so i just want to know like what was that like kind of being a part of that experience um, I mean, how can you win? Yeah, I. Well, that's a that's a hard question. Um, you let them win. We know. You, I lied up a little bit is what really happened. Uh, I mean, just the whole experience. I think there was only me and maybe one other girl that was from like a mid major school. The rest mm-hmm. of those girls were, you know, always on ESPN, always playing prime time, and they're really good players. And some play in the WNBA now, and it's like just to be recognized um, as one of the top shooters in the country and then to kind of get like the world treatment and put you on a plane and you know pick you up in a nice black escalade and drive you everywhere it was a lot of fun and then you know the environment was just unreal you know you play in a packed target center and it's like i've never played with this many people in here um the crowd was great the energy was great i mean obviously i wish it would have wouldn't it would have went a little better but you know, it is what it is. 
I'm still pretty good, I think. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, I sat there for about like an hour and a half cold, and then I was the first one to shoot. Not saying it's an excuse, but I definitely was a little cold. But I mean, so is everybody. So, yeah. But I had a blast. I mean, I think yeah, I was I was that would be see. pumped to lose in the first round and still like have the best time ever. <laughs> You were dapping some people up too. I remember. I remember going. Oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had to dap people up. Yeah, I want to hit. Good thing they didn't invite me. I would have struggled. <laughs> yeah, no. You have to master the art of the dap before you. It's just you have to. You have to if you're a basketball player. That's why I taught her. Yeah. You have to be Tay came home and literally taught me <laughs> after that <laughs> practice. <laughs> Yeah, Frank, I remember watching that. I was so nervous. <laughs> I wasn't nervous, man. I was just like, I'm not probably not supposed to win this thing. Yeah. We, I mean, I got, got beers flowing. We got so many Idaho fans that night. Me? They're all I was just like, come it. check this yeah, out. Come check this out. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I wish I could have um performed a little bit better. It's all right. It was so, <laughs> Sorry. so really cool. It is what it is. I remember like being so I can somehow convince some friends of mine from the band to come watch it at D. Willie's with me, and we were you guys, you might remember, probably saw Jack, and he was, we were both kind of talking about doing uh, that, like how the band did that, one, after your first shot you made, just jumping out of our chair, just counting, one, two. <laughs> I wish, if I had the band and, like, if I could have brought, like, two teammates, I bet you I would have yeah. absolutely smashed it. <laughs> Definitely. Just yeah. yeah, I needed my hype. I needed my hype squad behind me. <laughs> I didn't, my parents were like in the nosebleeds, and everybody else had like everybody courtside. And I was like, "Yo, how did you get these tickets? <laughs> like, why? I can't even see my parents <laughs> wherever they are." Coach was there, but he was in the nosebleeds with my dad. They were having a blast. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> got it. Take it up with Jake from State Farm. I yeah, I should. I gotta call Jake from State Farm. <laughs> So then what was your kind of go, the three point shooting contest? What was the, what was your, your favorite moment like with the team or like, what was your favorite? Like, yeah. What was your favorite moment with the team? When you remember it with the, of the team? Um, Like at the three point competition or just like in general, like when you're with everybody, just like, because I've asked, like the, like for example, like the fans' favorite moment of the team is, is the shot. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know the shot. Yeah, <laughs> we know. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't planned. At all. <laughs> My bad. It's your shoot, shoot. Um, I think my favorite moment is um. The WNIT game against Denver. Um, yeah, that was fun for sure. Like no question. It just ha it just so happens to be like the last the last home memory I have. But I've never seen them that packed. I've never not been able to talk to Michaela when she was standing directly in front of me. Denver's I was like, "What are you one. saying? I can't hear you." <laughs> <laughs> like we basically played that whole game screaming. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only way we could talk to each other. But just the whole environment and to see that many people um, want to come out and support us like that and not just show up to the game and sit there, but to be so invested and chanting and heckling the other team. It was just, I wish I could go back and play in that game again, just to feel it all over again. Yeah, I agree. That is easily my <laughs> memory too. Like <laughs> Nothing beats that game. So then that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious on this now then. Um, in terms of away teams, like where's one of the, some of the most electric atmospheres you guys have been to? Or most hostile, however you'd like to answer that. But <laughs> what are some of the top tier, you know? Well, we definitely know where the most hostile is. <laughs> um, Idaho is definitely the most hostile crowd that we played. 
Um, but there were some really like really good crowds that we played in front of. I think the Arizona game in the WNIT, our last game, the they had an amazing crowd. Like that was amazing. Um, Baylor was really good. They had a really good crowd. Yeah. Shameless um, plug. We we got shirts trolling. Uh, yep. I know. <laughs> oh, they really don't like us over there. Yeah, they didn't even go eat at a restaurant. And they're like, you're from Idaho. <laughs> yeah, bro. What you gonna do about it? You know, when you beat them so much, you know that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, no, they're always that. That place is always the packed gym. They always have a good crowd. They're mm -hmm. always not afraid to uh, let you know when you miss a shot. Like I don't <laughs> already know I missed it, but I think freshman year, um, I remember we got smacked. We got absolutely smacked freshman year. Yeah, at their place. And Allie fouled out, and you fouled out, Mike. And they, yeah. people are like waving a mic, and they're standing up, like, "See you later." And I'm like, Coach, yeah. "I'm scared. Take me out. I don't want to <laughs> anymore." But yeah. we got the last laugh, I think. So That's true, it. we did. Yeah, there were some rough times there. North Dakota, North Dakota too. Yeah, they always have really All good packs of Betty. Yeah. They had really good crowds. How are the and Montana we never there? Montana was always good, yeah. They like weren't Montana. they didn't really like say anything to us though. Yeah, yeah, I never like heard anything from the fans there. No. But like they always had a ton of people there. Just, they were all there for the casual viewing experience, not to Yeah, anymore. they were always pretty chill. Like <laughs> Yeah, no, I, mean, I don't it's... remember anybody saying anything to me. Yeah. Well, it's like the Splash Brothers, right? Like, people just buy the ticket to enjoy the show. That's what's happening. They knew you guys were in town. <laughs> they were just there for us. Exactly what was happening. Like, I don't want to disrupt them. I want to watch them do what they do. <laughs> I think we always, we always played well, like, at Montana. So they never had anything to say. Mm -hmm. so I was like, what, what are you going to do? I just hit eight threes. You got something to say? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, they were just like silence because Tay would pull up from the grizzly and they would just I don't know like, what got into me there, but I was like, oh, you have my hands in my face? I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> You're guarding me really well? I'm going to shoot it. Yeah, Montana. Was I was like, ah, good defense. I shall pass. But like, Montana, I was just hucking it up there. If it goes in. Yeah, That's yeah. what I did everywhere. Who am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Is there it kind of going off though, like the way the venues and stuff? Is there a player that you always gave you trouble or like you always like, I wouldn't say respected their game? That's Savannah Smith. Savannah Smith. Yeah, that easily. Every single time you just like she's so good and I have so much respect for her. Mm -hmm. but, like, no matter what we did, it like literally on the scouting report in large capital bold letters, like. She's gonna hesitate. She <laughs> has the best hezzy you'll ever play against. And she would do it and you're like, here it comes. And you bite every single time. Yeah. And yeah. like the way she comes off ball screens and she can shoot. So it's not like it's not like she can't shoot and you're like, I'm gonna sit back like four feet away and just wait for her to come at me. Like you can't do that because she'll shoot it from the logo and she's fast and she just respects, but I, she pissed me off. Yeah, I mean, definitely the like one of the best players we played against. Well, yeah, she was the Hodgins. Well, yeah, the Hodgins. Yeah, always oh, fundamentally sound. <laughs> yeah, kill you with good shooting form and oh rebounds. Seriously, yeah, those 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 players for sure. Savannah Smith could just like she did everything. So it's like, how do I guard someone who can literally do everything? Right? Like <laughs> and you can't like you just she's just she's so fast. Yeah. And she's just so good. But you have to guard her close because she shoots. <laughs> yeah. She I could find a player from any team that would just just gave us problems, I think. There's always one. Yeah. And you just hope that like you do the game plan well, and maybe they have a somewhat off night, but there's always someone mm -hmm. that you just hope to God just misses. <laughs> just miss. Yeah. 
So you, you guys have kind of had the benefit of, I guess, because you guys are really our first outside of the football realm or general athletic department. You guys spent your whole time playing in the big sky. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious, where would you guys rank? Like, who are our rivals? And, like, who's number one? And who's like, yeah, we consider them a rival. But, you know, that that's probably the last team I would say I, like, actively circle on a calendar or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would say I think Eastern. We've always mm -hmm. had absolute dogfights with Eastern. Here yeah. – I mean, in Moscow or in Cheney, it was always, it was always a fight with them, um, mm -hmm. for sure. I think, I think they're our top rival in my opinion, just because yeah, we're really close to each other, and it just always seemed to get like a lot of respect between our teams. But there are definitely a lot of, um, not hostility, but like we just played hard against each other, and I think they always matched up well with us, and it was just always, it was always tough. Super yeah. tough to get a win over in Cheney. Definitely. Yeah, I would agree. And I feel like we just played them so much more than any team because we met them in the tournament like almost every year, I swear. And then we met them in the postseason our sophomore year. And so they were just kind of like the team we could never get rid of. Uh, we played them four times sophomore year. Yeah. Well, so, we like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I know. <laughs> Like it's the WBI, like they just play somebody else. <laughs> but hey, we went over there and that was the first time that was my first win. Our first win in Cheney. Yeah. Yeah, but, that one felt good. <laughs> I mean, I think Idaho State's a rival too, just because you look at I mean, coach obviously used to coach there, and I don't think they really like that about him. Which I don't know why. He's a no, they love him there. in Moscow. Just it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think, again, that's a team that, like, we always went back and forth with. They're really physical, and they're basically the exact opposite of us, like, with their playing style is mm -hmm. they like to slow it down, and they're going to kill you with, you know, the 30-second shot clock, and then they're going to get a no-rebound and do it to you all over again. Mm -hmm. And we're like, hey, the first shot, if you're open, like, over half court with 27 seconds left on the shot clock, like, send it. <laughs> that's how we play, but that's, like, not – not Idaho State whatsoever, but yeah, I was there too. Yeah, I definitely say those two teams. So not the donkeys, huh? No, eh, they don't even oh, deserve he considering like once, them. like is it your first? No, good. That's what I want. They were, they were I'm scared to play us, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I mean, they you guys would have smoked them. That's why. Well, I mean, we played, we played him senior year in Long Beach, and that was that was a high scoring game. For sure. Yeah. We, we were up there. I think, I mean, apologies. I didn't play very well that tournament. Mike went, you went off, dude. I didn't really pull my weight. <laughs> I, mean, I had 20 that game, but it was like, it wasn't a good 20. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I got 20 points off of like layups and free throws, and Mike had like 30 points in the first half. And I was like, you go. <laughs> Down to the last, like, we were in it till the last like thirty seconds. Yeah, we I really really think we were like the better team. We just that we was a bad tournament. For yeah, us. we did not play well that tournament. We lost both games. Yeah, but we scrimmaged them our freshman year. They were like our first kind of like it was our first one. Yeah, and we smacked them. <laughs> yeah, we totally smacked them. Like Same. ran them out of the gym. So that's why they didn't want to play. They didn't want to keep score, though. They didn't keep score when we were scrimmaging, but Ethan was keeping score on the end of the bench, and he was like, yeah, we won every game. I was like, <laughs> That's, that's like in new sports. Everybody knew the score. You don't have to keep it. We know it. It's yeah. That yeah. scored right here. You, clearly. Yeah, but we didn't play them, like, enough. Now they play them enough. Rivals. They don't deserve to be in the conversation anyways. No. The community college. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> would you want to see kind of like the men's team, how they play WSC or Virginia? Would you like kind of see the same thing with them or maybe not? I wish. I wish we would have played them. I, I wish all the smoke. All of it. I think that would have been so fun. 
I don't know why we don't play each other. We we're literally water everywhere. Yeah. That's what I want. That's my. I think thing. they were too scared. They didn't want to lose to a a big sky team and hurt their little Pac-12 ego. But because they would scrimmage them to postseason sophomore year, but we did like an inner squad thing to like. Oh yeah, I forgot. We were with them and they were with us, so we couldn't be like we whooped you. <laughs> but honestly, I think we pulled our weight. More than we did, definitely. That's the one thing. If I ever talk to Terry Gallick about anything, is get like a, like how they do with the, the Eastern games, have like a double header with the yeah. Bucks, you would be the best. That would be Make really cool. Like we're all already there. It's a five minute yeah. bus ride. Yeah. They didn't want the smoke, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys think about the tournament being moved to Boise? Do you think that's, because I know. I've heard all from the Big Sky Conference, at least, that's been pretty well received. But I guess from competitor standpoint, did you kind of like the neutral site? But I feel like for Idaho it's, and Idaho State, even it's not really that neutral. I feel like we do a pretty good job of traveling. That year, um, boy, the year I went down to Boise, it was there was a lot of Idaho fans there. Yeah. Like I've always wondered how Montana fans feel about that. Like you know, we have <laughs> the flagship of the Big Sky and. The, they go down to Boise, and it's just like, no offense to our men's team, who's you know had some rougher years, but even for them, like people are showing up for it. And then for your guys' games, like it was noticeable that it's by far the largest crowd. I felt like, yeah, no, I loved the move to Boise. I thought that was a really good move. And I, yeah. there's so many Vandal alums in Boise. Like, yeah, we just had great support. I, it was kind of a. I feel like we did kind of have an advantage over some other teams, <laughs> but it was still a neutral site. Um, yeah. So it's not our fault that our fans travel and stuff. So we yeah, just I think it's a case anyways. I think it's a quicker drive from Pocatello to Boise than Moscow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's not mileage wise, Definitely. but yeah, it's uh so if anything, Idaho state has the biggest advantage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah, they do. I mean, I think people complain. I, I don't know. I mean, I think it was better than Reno because I think it was more central for, like, all the teams. Like, I think no matter where you put it, somebody's mm -hmm. going to have an advantage. Teams are going to have, you know, fans that travel better than others. Like, there were never a lot of, like, NAU fans or Weber State fans, no matter where we were. If we were in Reno, if we were in Boise, it was all the same. Like, the fans – for certain teams always showed up and other fans didn't and that's just how it is but yeah yep. it is what it is they can whine about it all they want mm -hmm. yeah they go play in Dahlberg for the whole tournament that's definitely unfair <laughs> yeah, right. dream first opponent for the first game in ICCU arena Hmm. Is that thing ever going to get done? <laughs> Supposedly, it looks. You know, it opens, I think, January next year officially. I'll be there. So it won't be ready for the basketball season, but I think it's going to be done and it'll be the next. So not this upcoming, but the 2022 season. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's got the beams up. It's looking beautiful. It's, you can see it. Yeah. You can see, you can you can actually picture it now instead of just seeing the empty <laughs> grass field that it was. I mean, I think it'll be easy for coach to get a bigger name schools there, for sure. Mm -hmm. I first of all, I don't get why people don't put it together in general that like you can fly to Moscow or fly to Pullman and you can play WSU and then you can play Idaho and there's your road trip for the week. Like, I don't know, we're not using our heads or something. <laughs> There should be no reason why people don't want Terry, to take notes. That should be a pitch. <laughs> I just it makes sense. Like you, you could stay at the same hotel and play two teams, and yeah. it would just yeah. it's a, it's Thursday, a, Idaho, Saturday, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, then, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you have like I know Portland State got Tennessee to come play when their new arena went yeah. up, and I was like, how did you get Tennessee in here, dude? <laughs> But I mean, I think, yeah, I think you can probably get like maybe a Pac-12 school or maybe Gonzaga. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, Gonzaga is a school that should come do one at Idaho and then go play at WSU. Like, they're a good matchup for both teams, I think, and be worth their time. They'll probably think they can win both, and they are really good. So, mm -hmm. come on in. <laughs> we'll see if they win both. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll give them a good run for their money. <laughs> um, I guess for you guys now being alumni, what would – the I, I mean, how would you utilize the ICCU arena? Because I know basketball has been so tough for both programs because you start in – I remember talking to Don Berlin back when I was in school. He talked about how hard it was to recruit because half the year when you're usually having people do visits, you're in Mem Gym. And then the other half of the year where you're really getting the, the nicer stadium, I guess, um, you know, it's in Cal and Spectrum. Did you guys find the struggle in making those movements and not really having a designated practice spot and all that? And then what do you think, like, the biggest selling point the university should be selling to new recruits about the arena? Yeah, I think the arena will be a really good, like, recruiting tool. Um, just because I think one thing that we did struggle with is like when we were in MEM, MEM is, during the day is used as like a classroom. Yeah. Um, and so it just, it wasn't open and free to us whenever we wanted it or whenever we had a moment. And so like Taylor and I, we love to shoot extra shots whenever we can, um, especially like we have a bad game. Monday morning, we want to be like back in the gym getting extra shots up. So I think that's something like the coaches can definitely use is just that they'll have a gym pretty much at their disposal anytime they want it um and obviously it's going to look great and people are going to come to the games and it's going to be really fun to play there so i think it'll be a big recruiting tool but honestly i loved playing in mev and cowan so i think both of them like have like really great things about each of them and so i didn't mind that at all yeah, i think like mem and cowan have two totally different vibes for me like them to me was uh like pre-conference games like we're gonna play all the the random schools and then like when i got an account it was like okay now's the time to like lock in like it's conference season like you don't it, it was weird sometimes like when jazz fest would happen and we'd have to go back into mem for like a week and then you're playing like teams you normally play in cow and you're playing them in mem which yeah. could be it was a little weird because you're like i don't know i'm not used to seeing them in like this gym but i think there was no like hesitation for me when i was like thinking about going to idaho it wasn't like oh they play in mem like mem is the the coolest old school like hoosiers vibe you could get like with the bricks and all that stuff in there i think it's just i mean it's a beautiful place and i loved playing in there especially because like we didn't sell out every game and then when you play in Mem, like you're so much, you're all the fans are closer, and the environment is just so. They're just closer to you. They're closer to the game. They can like really everything. And the band is like right there. Yeah. yeah. So then I, so I, I got a follow up for that then, because I, I mean, it was part of the big thing with the ICCU ICCU arena was they purposely made the capacity smaller, which drew a lot of ire from a lot of people. But mm -hmm. uh, one thing that Brian Marceau, our, our other usual co-host, has brought up is Idaho State actually did a switch where they quit converting Holt Arena into basketball and they do all their games now in Reed Gym, specifically mm -hmm. because, like you guys said, you're not selling out every game. So for them, they found that their atmosphere is better if they can get a smaller gym and get, you know, same amount of people, but it feels like more people. And he said, like, according to Idaho State people, they love the change. I think they just did it last year. I mean, is that something – like, so it doesn't really matter with ICCU coming, but maybe for next year, I mean, do you think a switch to just playing in Mem Gym all year might add some of that atmosphere? Or do you do you guys kind of like playing in Cowan? I mean, I liked Cowan just for the reason that, like, the locker room was in the dome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you didn't have to, like, carry your shoes over there and carry your jersey, and especially when it's snowing and you're like, I don't want to get anything dirty. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason, like, I I think we've always talked about, like, if they would just take the floor of Cowan and put it in Mem, it would look so phenomenal in there, and I would love playing every single game in there. It's just that, like, we wish we just had a locker room in there, 
pretty much that's it. Like we use the, I think we use the tennis locker room, which was fine. But like, again, you don't have all your stuff there. It's, you gotta it's make sure you back early to like, there's just, just some chairs, which is fine. But yeah, that was pretty much the only part about them that was inconvenient was like walking over there when it was cold because we were too stubborn to like put pants on. So we walk over there freezing cold in our shorts. <laughs> And it was like when I was at, I went to Montana State for the football game, and those guys, they have it rough. So their like locker room is like a half mile from the football stadium. So we were all out tailgating, and it was October 13th, and it was like three feet of snow. And same thing, they're all walking through the snow with all their stuff. And this is like three hours before the game. I'm like, that would be absolutely miserable. At least like Cal and to Mem Gym is like 100, yeah, it's a little more than 100 yards, but. Ooh, I could not have done that. And then in like cleats and everything. Yeah. yeah. I just had to bring my shoes and like yeah. my jersey, which I stuck. Don't want to don't get on hardwood with wet wet soles. Yeah, I <laughs> have to. But it's like all, well. all the random people would walk in and then walk across the floor and you're like, dude, walk around the lines. <laughs> my shoes dry. Did did any like when they played you ever like hear any like what opponents would say when they would be you'd be playing in Mem Gym like with all the different lines and just, yeah, like, actually you have, like, three or four different like, ball and forwards. whatever else. Yeah. yeah, we played Washington the sophomore year, or junior year. We played Washington and Mem, and at my yeah junior year, I played. Uh, I have a really good friend that played for Washington, and I was talking to her after their shoot around, and one of her teammates that I played against in high school. She looks over at me and she goes, oh, so where's like, where are we playing tonight? I said, we're playing right here. And she goes, with all the lines on the floor? I said, are they in your way? And she was like, yeah, it's basically what I said. I was like, you good? Like, you know, like the black ones. You just look at the black ones. I think you know, like which ones they are. And she was like, oh, for real? Like, you're not messing with me? I was like, not, do you see another gym that I know about? Like there's nothing here, and she was like, "Oh, that yeah, that's cool." And I was like, "Yep, yeah, yeah. sorry, I don't want to tell you." <laughs> I say that actually probably played into our hands a bit because I feel like that does throw some people off, and for you guys, it probably became second nature. Yeah, so I never honestly noticed. The, the black I never like never questioned <laughs> it. We don't shoot from right on the line, anyways. Like we shoot from like four feet behind it, so it wasn't a problem for us. But we're never really looking for the line. Anyway. If you're that close to the line where you might be stepping There's on lines? it. <laughs> the coach always said, like, don't even think you're close to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, Chris, you got anything? I'm good, man. You want to ask I, maybe one or two, then we'll move, pull, move Yeah, on. I got a couple of, like, I couldn't with it, even though this is kind of more asking you about basketball and stuff. I couldn't not ask about some band stuff. <laughs> we love the band. We yeah. can talk about the band all day. All day. <laughs> um, that's great. Cause like, Ooh, it gives me an idea for something. <laughs> uh, Taylor, I know you asked this for, for the getting ice segment that I did for the band last fall, but I was kind of curious, what is some of your, both of you, both of your favorite heckles that the band did? Um, your mother is a Vandal fan. Yeah. <laughs> One. That always made me laugh. Um, what else? You used to yell uh, Starbucks when we played North Dakota because their jerseys were green, and I thought that was really funny. It took me a minute. I was at the free throw, and I was like, why are they yelling Starbucks? And then I looked at the jerseys, and I was like, oh, ho, ho. I get it. <laughs> what else? Power of potatoes. Yep, that's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic. That one came up, I think, in a game against Montana. Like our director at like the one of the I think it was against Idaho State in twenty sixteen. We start he started it and we were like he had to come up with something. So we started we started getting power of potatoes or something. It might have been that or a Montana game. <laughs> he started yeah, one of my favorites. That and it just stuck. Uh, what else? There's that one, I don't know her name, but she has like the most distinct yell that I. Oh, Jalen. Oh, yes. That and yell. like, I know it's coming, so I'm good, but like, people at the free throw line, they're just not ready. 
Like you guys will be yelling and then she'll just jump in right when they're about to shoot. And I'm like, dude, you got some lungs. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I think she wrote a book one time too, like Green Eggs. Yeah. Yes. I remember. I, remember that. I, I uh, was very, the only thing I listened to in the games was the band. Like I never really heard the fans, but I heard you guys. Yeah, same. <laughs> Uh, favorite pep band tune. Favorite. I mean, like you know, you you guys, you, you both are playing, but is there? Oh, oh, I know that. Oh, we know. <laughs> um, I don't know what you any know, of the yeah, ones are. The one where you go like not that, that, one, one. that one. That one. I always dance. Oh, that's with. uptight. Great. Yeah. That one. I uh, yeah. We. <laughs> One. And that then was had cool, uh, switch like a I don't know I guess not really a beat drop but there was like a switch in one of them. Oh, gosh. I don't know how to describe it, but it was really aggressive oh, and I, I, you know which one I'm talking yeah, about. I, I jumped when it happened. I yeah. jumped on the beat. Yeah, there's like That's just the it go. It's like building up and then it's just like and then it goes. Oh, yeah. Um, so hype. Um, uh, 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 See, no, you know no, it. No, not that video. I think I, if I can just look at the names, I'll probably know. It. No, it would have been Hello, What is Love? Not Hey, uh, hey Yeah, Old Town Road. It would have been Cashmere. No, it might have been Cashmere or something what? like I that. I know the name. Oh. It was like Cashmere and some like Kanye West song, if I remember right, or something. I don't know, but it would get hype at this very moment if you guys played it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there were certain songs that were just yeah. I don't really know any of the names of them either, but oh, but I would hear like the first note, and I was like, "Let's get it!" I'm yeah, like, turn me up. <laughs> I've always wondered that, like, if athletes actually hear like, I get it's different with like a band, but like. When you go to any kind of professional sporting event and they've got a DJ, it's like, do they actually hear the songs going and get some pumped up? Or are they just so in the zone or the meeting or whatever's going on? So that's kind of cool. They're like, you guys are like, oh, oh, yeah, let's do this. Let's go drain some threes. <laughs> we'll like at timeouts too, if coach like timeouts, we would always sit on the bench and the coaches would like get in a little huddle and talk with themselves first. Obviously, if it wasn't a very serious moment, like a great song came on, I would probably be messing around the bench. That's just how I was. Like, I would sing or dance or do something stupid. But, like, if I was playing in a game and they played music like they do in professional games, like, I don't think I would notice it at all. You're just yeah. too, like, you're too locked in. But if if I'm on the bench, I'm I'm probably vibing with the band. Yeah. Probably. Well, Honestly, I think the you. band got me more hyped than like our pregame like playlist. The band would come in and start playing, and I was just like, so much more hyped. Like we would get so sad, like over Christmas break if they oh, weren't when there. the band wasn't no, there. Was like, so we walk out there and we just see like the empty stand, like where the drums would be, and we're like, oh, yeah, we should be there. This was our first year of like going to Christmas break games, and it was a, uh, it was like it was, it's different. It's yeah, like, break is rough. Hear, it's rough. Hear everything the coach says, and I'm like, whoa! I didn't realize he he talked that much. Or, <laughs> that or you can hear the bench a lot. And like, wow. See, I've always been a big like. I think they should do for like Christmas break, do like an all Idaho tournament in Boise every year, where you get like Boise State, Idaho State, Idaho, Northwest Nazarene, you know, LC. Like, just anyone that plays basketball in the state and just, boom, you're doing, like, a weird round-robin thing, whatever. Yeah. Instead of playing, like, the, you know, NAIA schools preseason, like, do it during the holiday break right before, like, conference play and just, I don't know. Then you guys are in Boise and some alumni can show up and get yeah. some atmosphere going. I think that would be a cool – I think for both programs, obviously, but – Yeah, that would be so, really cool. I think for the women's because I think the teams are all – way more even there where I feel like on the men's side, Boise State they run everybody, but like you guys, I mean, I guess you guys would have run everybody on the women's side, but it's way more Absolutely. fun when you're run, when you're running people than being ran on. So mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> well, we played one pregame, 
preseason game in Boise, mm-hmm. like right before Christmas. And that was mm-hmm. really, really fun. That was fun. There were a lot of people there. It yeah. was better with the men. I don't know who they played. We played Eastern Oregon. Yeah, see, it doesn't even matter who you play. People would show up. It could be yeah. College of Southern Idaho. I don't know. But, like, people yeah, would be there, and it would be fun. Especially yeah. because neither of, like, us or the men's team, we never played in Boise. So it was, like, their one chance, like, all the fans yeah. down there for to come see us. And, like, they put out all the little, like, things you can smack together and, like, little, little <laughs> and put them, Yeah. <laughs> they put them on like, all the seats and stuff. And, like, people just had a really good time. And, I mean, it was nice, too, because, like, we had a – Isabel, who is from Boise, so like she brought out like forty something fans like by herself. <laughs> but the rest of us didn't really contribute, but she really helped. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, especially with the doubleheader. Like it's a two for one. Like why not just go watch both games? Right. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, it played really well. So and by that time you're probably over your family, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with some vandals and watch some basketball and maybe have a yeah. couple of Montuckies. Yeah, I mean, why not? It's like one night for like what, four hours. Just have exactly. a nice time. Right. <laughs> Plus, I love it when we have vandal events down there because we just take over the freaking town. It's so yeah. Crazy. I love it because all the Boise ugly blue can just gets run over by the black. Yeah, yeah. We're right there with you. Gold's a better <laughs> color than blue or orange. Blue so orange. Like, who's like, idea blue. Was that? Gold. It's like it, every school should have gold. It's literally the most awesome color. Or just black. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> black and blue, black and orange. Right. Yeah. Not blue and orange. Not right. blue and orange. Yeah, throw black in anything, it makes it better. Yeah, they should have gone black and orange or black blue. and blue. Better. Do you kind of like all right, Martin? You got any any last follow up questions? Or are we we getting into the tricky up. part? Do you speaking of colors like thing, but do you do you like the rebrand that they were doing with the university and athletics or do you like the old kind of Vegas gold, whatever it's called? I mean, I kind of like the old gold just because that's what we like had for it's within the jerseys I have behind me. Yeah, so like that's what we kind of came in with, and you know, pretty much, yeah, all of our clothes have that gold on it. So personally, I like that one better just because of the like sentimental part of it. But so I, mean, I see some of the gear, and I'm like, okay, actually, that new gold looks good. So yeah, yeah, I think at first, like. I I I still prefer the old gold. I think I just like how it's a little bit more muted and like it's not so like in your face bright. But it's also gold. Like I said, <laughs> yeah. But like some of the new stuff, like the shirts we got, like we have like one shirt from our senior year that has the the new bright gold on it, and I actually really like that shirt a lot. And like Coach gave us a shirt for like the champ when we won the championship, and it has that on it, the new stuff, and I like it. It just like I think when I originally saw the new gold, I was like, this is a lot. Like, are we going to put this on everything? Because, like, we need it in doses. But yeah. I like the way they're doing it. Like, they're not smacking us them with, like, the bright gold jerseys, which I thought they were going to do. And I was like, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> don't put them in those uniforms. Yeah. Just look mustard yellow. Yeah. Kind of just, like yeah. Colorado has. yeah you so. can see the podcast is straight. Interesting. We've got like the gold on our like live fly, and then we've got the new gold in our our player names. So we're we're also <laughs> making the transition. But I just go like if you look at this yellow compared to the yellow on my hat, I mean, it's yellow. It's not gold. Mm-hmm. That's that's my yeah. one complaint. I'm one of the few yeah. that like I'm not a fan of it at all. But yeah. you know, like I said, I if we win in it, I don't care what colors we rock. So so yeah, true. I, mean, I think too. I don't know like. It, we didn't really have it, especially like our black uniforms, the new ones we got, not the ones that are behind you, but the ones, the new ones we got still have that gold in it and they look really good. I guess I have, yeah. but yeah. And like our white uniforms coach just went with like just black and white in those. And I thought they looked really clean. I like the, the one I think was the ones you had your senior year, the, like kind of the more the block Idaho on the. Yeah. Those I, I like. I really good. like our whites from last. Yeah, year. those are really nice. Like I saw that in my locker for the first time, and I was like, mm. "Put me in some all white <laughs> shoes, and we're looking flying out there." <laughs> Every time I put on the white uniform, he tried. He he would ask us like, "Do you guys want to wear silver tonight?" And we're like, "Nope, no, we don't." You, you, guys, you didn't like the silvers. I just like the white more. Yeah, same. 
I didn't mind the silvers, but like the whites just, they looked super so cool. clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the silver too, like it was hard to match it with the right undershirt. So I was always like two shades, which is a personal problem. <laughs> but that's like, I didn't like this. We started wearing undershirts and like other people started wearing undershirts. So it wasn't just me. I was like, if we could just match them up like the right way, I would, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> Okay, and now going on to the final segment, getting ice, which is you can ask, you can ask me and Chris any question you want. It can be Idaho related. It can be whatever you want. But to give you some time to think about some questions, have you ever have your summer plans been canceled? Are you having a hard time finding a backup plan? Well, don't fret and don't look too far away. There are amazing options for you options right out your back door that offer the ultimate mix of fun and adventure venture into the largest protected wilderness in the continental united states for the ultimate form of social distancing hughes river expeditions has a fun first class trips on rivers in the west since 1976 enjoy a multi-day trip down the middle fork of the salmon of the salmon river can the salmon salmon river canyons the Selway, or even special trips like the one to see the Perside. Perside meteor shower. Camp on pristine beaches, hike amazing trails, spot wildlife, and soak in beautiful natural hot springs. Take in the take in the history along the river. Fit take a take yeah, take in the history along the river. Fish some of the most remote stretches of river in the lower 48. Let Hughes River Expeditions handle everything else. Hughes River Expeditions is vandal owned and operate is vandal owned and operated and is ready to take you on a vacation of a lifetime. HRE is booking trips now through 2023. Wow, that's far. Don't miss out on a once in a lifetime trip right here in the Gem State. You can check them out at HughesRiver.com or give them a call at the HRE office. Whatever you. What are you waiting for? Find out what it's like to grab a paddle, catch dinner, and ride the bull on the world-class rivers right here in the Gem State. Call them now at 800-262-1882. There has never been a better time to get out in the fresh air of the Idaho backcountry. Nice work. Getting ice. So, <laughs> so Martin kind of covered it. Yeah, you guys can ask any question. It doesn't have to be sports related, or it can be. Time, I can think but... of one too. If you need more, more time. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh. Hopefully, this, this is not to ask, all... but I so... want to ask about the band because we obviously okay. look, we love the band. I can yes. yes. talk about the band all day. Like <laughs> it's the band is the best. Like, uh, okay. Anyways, to my question, <laughs> what like team is the band's favorite? Like what games do you like, do you guys enjoy the most? Or is it kind of different for everyone? It's kind of a different for everyone. Like I, uh, it's kind of, I enjoyed them all. It's kind of, I hate to say it like that, but Idaho yeah. State, I, if I had to pick one, I'd say Idaho State because they're just, it's in Idaho and there's so much like Idaho stuff you can, you can say like, you can use like the flagship or land grant chant a lot more. You <laughs> could against any other one. Yeah. Even though they are, even like, it's kind of, I don't, I didn't like it as much towards the end of my time in the band, but one of my favorite like, people liked it was like the thing with like, with again, you're playing Boise state would be, you say Boise is not a state. And as a joke, we'd kind of, maybe chant Idaho's not a state once or twice to kind of see if we could get a reaction out of them. <laughs> Never worked. It was, it was kind of a funny joke. <laughs> and just kind of go off of that, kind of play off the, the flagship land grant and that yeah. kind of, that kind of stuff. So do you have like a favorite, um, like team, like wins basketball? <laughs> Subtle. As far as like, like what? What do you? Yeah, mean? like what team do you like to play for the most? Like, like the <laughs> men's or the, the volleyball? Oh, the men's or women's team? Yeah, just any like. Football. Oh, it, yeah. it, it 
Oh, it's it's the women's team hands down. Like I like I I love the marching band, but like playing for you, like after it all for me, it all comes back to one fateful night in Waco. Just kind of that's where it kind of like I kind of said like I just love to play for the women's team. Like that, it's, it's always the best. Oh, did you hear that? Thanks, I wanted. No <laughs> 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 Um, I guess we've we've talked about our favorite songs, but what's like what what was your favorite song to play like at our games? Uh, I had a couple. It was it was uptight, like the one the horn moves that you yeah. both of you can do. We can do. We, I did Jungle do. Boogie. Oh, well, actually three. Uptight Jungle Boogie, which I you probably know Jack the Dancing Man. I would always occasionally try and get him on my shoulders, and he would do his scream with that. <laughs> and then uh. And then YMCA, because he would always just go dance around the arena, dance around Callen or Mem Jim, just doing YMCA. And you'd always get the crowd involved, and it was the best. Oh, so many good memories with the band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally, like, I could go on for days. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, the fact that you guys would always be, like, at the Big Sky Tourney, too. Like, yeah. Oh, that so oh cool. that's a good question. Did you ever, like, see other bands? <laughs> at yeah. the tournament and like size them up kind of like trash talk like we trash talk on the court but do you guys like trash talk in the hotel like wow you guys it sound was... like crap today terrible there's a couple times <laughs> there's a couple instances that I kind of speak out for that it was a uh, month one year we played Montana State we kind of they brought they had a big band like us and they we played off each other in the crowd and the chance a lot all the time and the other one it was uh was waco was the baylor band too was that one was they we started chanting like dr pepper because the doctor dr pepper museum or brisket <laughs> and then we also i think it was we also had some other chants too i think we started chanting like i-90 at one point <laughs> i think that's they so like, they're they they started playing their version of like light them up or some of the, they had their version of a song that we would be kind of play we'd play their ours ours and it was the funniest thing ever. And then That's they played their own water, and Montana then we played State. our beer song, and it was the funniest thing ever to hear their reaction to that. I think I was just watching a replay of like the Montana State game on Pluto the other day, and it was like you could tell like. We just won, and like everybody was going off, and each team plays a fight song. And Montana State like started their fight song, and then like within five seconds, you guys just started playing over them, and it was so much louder. And I just remember <laughs> watching that. I'm like, am I hearing them? Is our band just out playing Montana State right now while like their players are leaving the court? So I love that 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 you were like, oh yeah, Montana State one year. I'm like, I think I just watched that on TV. <laughs> That's one of my favorite. I vividly remember like going through like whatever high five and everybody and then they were playing montana state started playing their fight song and i was like did we not just win the game like are you confused like it's one of those kind of like Ooh, weird like quiet. or director but like the respect thing like you gotta let them play theirs and then you play ours and then we play our beer song on top of that <laughs> i was just i was annoyed because i was like you're playing it like you just won like go home get on your plane that's me i talk a lot of smack obviously I talked a lot of smack for you guys. Like I'd see other bands in the hotel and be like, "Hmm, you're kind of rough out there." <laughs> Better bring it today, fellas. Okay. <laughs> Our band's really good. Like, what do you got over there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was so like obvious that our band was the best, and I just felt like so good about myself. <laughs> like our band is so much better. That's our band. Yeah, <laughs> like, they would come in with like ten people, and I was like, "Where's your band? Like, who are these guys? You only got like five mm-hmm. people over there, dude. Like, look at ours." I remember, I remember talking with our director, and he would bring the limit he could bring of each instrument, or just the max he was allowed to bring. He would bring them at every game. I love it. Him to that's, Bay- that's Wait, to Reno, Boise, even even though Big Sky people, if you're watching, I paid for my tickets, but I got in with the band, the band entrance from the year in Boise that one year. I got in with them. Like, it's, they bring, like, Idaho brings the most they can get. Yeah. Thank you. You're going all the way out there. You might as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very like, true. we you guys legitimately, like, I'm not just saying that because you're our band, but, like, you guys always actually 
sounded better than everybody else. No, like they no. would, and I'm like, dude, shh, you're not good. You're not good. <laughs> yeah, because they would let the bands like take turns, and I was just like, ugh. Turn it off. Like our band plays the song better, so like let's just let them do it. <laughs> That's cool, but just let our guys handle it. All right. You guys play the triangle over there and just play yeah. along with our band. <laughs> I think there was a band that actually had a triangle too, and we were like that actually brought one to Reno one year. <laughs> that's what you hear. I know when like you're trying to throw somebody off. That's what that's what the players hear. Is the triangle. <laughs> oh dang! They got a triangle. I'm I'm distracted now. <laughs> there you go. I think they weren't. Also, other bands weren't as good at like heckling. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sometimes, not. like they would just tell me that, like, "Hey, you're not good." I'm like, "Good I'm one." All conference. <laughs> I'm like, that was a good one. Like, no points for creativity. Like, yeah, was our band was good. so creative. Like, I would hear what they say, and I like couldn't not laugh like i was on the court playing a game and i laugh <laughs> <laughs> it's really it made it hard to be serious in serious moments yeah <laughs> <laughs> um what else what else do i have to ask um chris do you got anything no you're getting ice for you i wasn't thinking i can't think of one maybe next time <laughs> I got one. I got one. Oh, yeah. Since since you have the Splash Sisters together, what's mm. your favorite memory of us? Like, ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Do, doing something together. We did a lot together, but like, or individual, doesn't matter. Free range. Here you go. Oh, gosh. I, mean, I'm, <laughs> I iced him. I think there's, yeah. a, there's a couple. Oh, God. There's a couple. Now he's iced. I remember my first, like, Kind of, I think it was like the first game, like the band was at. You're like both, you're in Mem Jam. I remember, I remember a, yeah, I remember a friend of mine who didn't actually play in the band that much. He didn't do basketball band that much, but he decided to go to that game. And I remember he, Viv, I think he remembered you, Michaela, because I think he went to your. I think you both went to high school together. Oh really? He, he pointed you out. I was like, oh, okay. I remember, like, as the season goes on, then I remember it was, uh, okay. uh, that I remember, like, for, it, I, I, it gets said a lot, Taylor, but I think the first memory for you is the, is the <laughs> shot. <laughs> like, I, that's everyone's first memory of me. Yeah. It's or legendary. One, I, remember, I remember after you, after the team came in, to the band hangout room in Waco. Like it was like right after the game, right after we had Vitex, whatever it was in Waco. We got cake or something, did the fight sign. I remember a couple others kind of uh, Ethan took a picture of the kiddie pool. And then we talked we uh I don't know if I could say that without like violations or anything. But I remember we talked about that and then I remember I just remember that, like, that night, just, like, the fight, like, everything about that night, just a fight song, everything. Yeah. It's kind of a long, spewed-out answer, but... That's yeah. a good memory, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wake up with that. Like, somebody nearly tripped on... No, that's a, no, that wasn't me. Somebody nearly tripped over one of the players. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> One heck of a night. Yeah. I was in the lobby for most of that night and then I went to my room. <laughs> it was a good night. I do remember um I this uh memory from the band in Reno, freshman year. Mm -hmm. I was I was walking by myself. I was going back to my room. We roomed together, Mike, freshman year. Oh I was, yeah. I wasn't with you for this one. I was walking back to my hotel room, like by myself, and like one of the band kids like turned the corner and saw me and they were like so excited to see me. And I was like, what's up? Oh, hi. And he, he was carrying like a six pack. Oh, that might have been me. That might have been me. I, mean, I don't know if it was you. I, I can't. Said. All I know is that 
you were like, hey, yeah, someone was like, you were a bunch of the band kids, like, we're in a room over here, like, you want to come have a drink? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I, you know, I was like, I'm uh, only 18, first of all. Um, second of all, I have a game tomorrow, so thank you. <laughs> I was really, like, I totally would if this was, like, the end of my senior year or something, but I was like, don't really think that works out with the, uh, the game plan for tomorrow. I want to, just, want to stay on the court <laughs> and perform. Yeah, but it was so funny because I was like, yeah, I was, that was my first, like, memory of the band being like, hey, those guys are so cool. Like, yep. I don't know why there's, like, this stigma about, like, band kids being weird, but, like, you guys are actually the night with a party at every single mm -hmm. party, like, anywhere I ever went. But that's one of my favorite band stories. Because I was like, mm -hmm. he, I literally have a game tomorrow. I can't. <laughs> I can't do this. I know the band no one loves their band like Idaho. That reminds me of my freshman oh. year. Where we have a band, band seminar called Freshman Seminar. And someone invited the soccer team, and they actually showed up the day before a game. We were like, what the... Sarah, oh, the soccer team goes hard. Yeah, yeah. I love them. <laughs> kind of moving things along from my getting ice. If you were in the band, what instrument would you play? <laughs> I know mine. Mm -hmm. Fire. Yeah, let's hear it, Tay. I've always wanted to play the drums. Like, the amount of times me I've played the drum set, like... It's been just me and like Cowan, and I've just seen it there. And like it's a Sunday morning, and nobody's there, and I just want to go hit it, but I never did. But like I just, I don't know. I would just vibe with the drums. I feel like I've always wanted to play them. They just look like so much fun. I just want to hit the things, especially during like the national anthem. I always watch the band guy, the guy on the drums hit the thing. <laughs> That's what I watched during the national anthem. Was not focused on the game whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I feel like drums would be fun, but I think I would want to be like one of the wind instruments or something because like the dancing and the moves just seem, you just look like you're having so much fun. A rhythm. I don't know which one, probably like the saxophone or something just cause that like looks really cool. Um, I yeah. rock trumpet. But honestly, like if I, weren't, uh, if I weren't on the basketball team, I would be in the band. Like yes. no question. Except you're good at music. Mike, mm -hmm. not good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here That's to keep humble. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Mu I'm not musically gifted at all. But yeah, neither am I. <laughs> Sorry. If I didn't play basketball. I would try to be in the band. The only rhythm I have is like with dribbling. <laughs> True. I'm in my hand, and I'm like, I don't know what these buttons do. <laughs> like, hold on. <laughs> that was another thing to up another thing. I still I'm still very grateful for having this autographed. I might somewhere up there. Somewhere, I think. Well what? I was just I think I was it was Jack Jack's the guy that dances, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like signing the cards oh, you and then like a musical instrument just like popped in front of me and I like didn't really look up and I was like, whoa, like, where'd this come from? This is not my card. I the whole team, like the whole team signed it. Like even even coach signed it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, Frank, that's cool. Coach is such a legend. Yeah, the best Big Sky coach by far, easily. Like it's not even. I Rich respect Bates. all of them, but he's the coolest one. Mm -hmm. Such a wow! What a guy! <laughs> such a good coach too. Like you guys don't yeah. get to see what he's like in huddles and like. Yeah. In the competitive, like, whenever I've seen him, I never see him at like a game, kind of wrap things up soon ish. But like, I remember seeing him like at like one of the games over break because you can actually hear everything, and it's just he goes from like yelling to like calm. And so, I'm like, wow, yeah, yeah, he gets after the refs for you. You don't even have to like, he doesn't even have to see it. You could just tell him, like, coach, that girl hit me in the face, and the ref didn't call it, and he's like. Okay. Get I over him, here. I remember hearing him yell like, I hear you, oh, come on, like a couple times. I'm like, oh, coach is mad. Yes. Yeah. So I want to know with Newly real quick. I think he's smart. He's got like the weird fashion sense where like he doesn't go the whole suit and tie. Sweater vest. Which I think is yeah. smart 
Yeah, and maybe maybe it changes with with Kloss at least now that he's got um, a little bit more money. But like every time I watch like Kloss or Berlin, their clothes were always like too big on them, and I was like, yeah. God, you guys like like do you not know how a properly fitted suit should be? Like if you're gonna wear it, wear it right. And then you see Newley, and you're like, see, at least he's like he's got it. He's like, I'm not a suit guy, and my look works. And I'm just like, thank God. Like he comes out, and you're like, that guy looks like a coach. Like I felt yeah. like Klaus and Berlin come out and you're like, oh man, like I feel like you're setting this up already. You got to get that stuff tailored. Newly's just like, <laughs> he's got the sweater or he's got the like, he's got like the little like turtlenecks. Yeah. It's like, I don't he's, really think coach he was got swag. For a while. He, he changed, I think it was like our junior year. He started with like those newer like Nike golf polos and like he yeah, walked, looking like Tiger. Or- <laughs> like, Dude, I was like, who are you? And the all black Converse, the all black Converse that he's got, and yeah. like he doesn't take off his cool like such like surfer bracelets he wears, like mm-hmm. take off, <laughs> leaves the rings on, and like he got new glasses one year, and I was like, woof, yeah, looking, you just gotta tone it down over there, man. You just the drip right here is just too, <laughs> it's too much, and like when just got drip. Like, like, we would wear white and he would like wear the white polo or like we would be wearing all black and he'd wear all black. And I'm like, it's just the fashion sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always looked good. And his style was so unique. Like I never saw any coach wear what he does and he Once pulls again, it off. Best in the big sky. Yeah. It's easily like, yeah. Not even like I see coaches and they try and wear like the green tie cause their team is green. And I'm like, it's just, that ain't it chief. <laughs> Well, we have really good colors for Coach, too, because, like, he can go with all black and still match. Yeah, he looks yeah. – he Put some gold job. accents on there. Yeah. Like, um, you can tell he needs a big good. gold watch. That's what he needs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he should just wear all the green yeah. for every game. I would say Newly could teach a class to coaches across the country on how to dress. Yes. I feel I like agree. basketball coaches are getting worse at that, and Newly's got it on point. <laughs> No, I didn't yeah. remember for a second. He would, uh, I would, sh- I'm still in the habit of showing up extremely early to games for like, because I'm still on band time, like going up, sitting in my spot in Mem Gym, and I just turn around and I just see Coach sitting up in a corner. And I'm like, what? I didn't yeah. know it was Coach at first because I thought I was like, wait a second, is that a parent or something? And I was, oh, that's Coach. Yeah, just he's that. Up in a little corner in Mem Gym. He's like very, like he's quiet, but he's not. Like, he's very strategic and, like, meticulous, I think, with, like, I think he's superstitious, too. I think he's really superstitious. He just mm-hmm. wants to <laughs> But, like, he's got his, like, game day routine just like we do. And, yeah. I mean, I think that structure is good, especially for us, kind of, like, he's always watching. He's always watching something. He's always got some kind of secrecy up his sleeve. Like, he's sitting up there for a reason. He's watching someone. Mm-hmm. It's probably someone from the other team. Like he's got a hunch that someone's hurt and he's trying to figure it out. Like there's a lot that goes into it. He's mm-hmm. his the craft of coaching is just something else with him. He's got mm-hmm. such a great basketball mind. Like people just don't really understand how good of a coach he actually is. Yeah. And how much time he spends like I think behind the scenes is like we don't even get to see all of what he does, but I know that he spends hours and hours like thinking of game plans and yeah he just he's got a vision for everything like yeah. before the first preseason practice like he knows exactly what he wants us to look like in like a month and he gets us there whether we he's like it or not. stuff right now you'd say yeah. oh he he's he's got the game plan for this next season he's he's mapped it already there's no question oh, yeah. like, he knows yeah. exactly what he wants he knows what he wants where like the only thing is that the girls just have to confirm they can do what he wants them to do. Yeah. It's them. And we got some studs now. I mean, I think yeah. this team's got a There's shot. Some, even the, yeah. this, the class, this upcoming class of freshmen, and even looking ahead to 2021, too, it's all looking looking up. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. He just I mean, reloads. He's so good. Yeah. He's, He's such a good recruiter. It's not even yeah. like. It's, I'm just going to take off even with the arena. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give, give him a shiny new toy and see what he does. Like, I literally, I, he doesn't like I think the biggest thing for coaching recruiting me was that he was always like brutally honest. Like that's how he was when I played there. That's how he was recruiting me. It was like you go on these other visits and you talk to coaches and 
they tell you things like we're going to play in the NCAA tournament next year, but you look at their record the year before and they were three and 27 and you're like, my guy, are we being honest? <laughs> and coach is like, look at my championship trophies. Look at my rings. I'm a damn good coach and uh, we're going to win. And I'm like, yeah, I like you. I believe like, you. Yeah, Let's do this. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's just good. A good. The whole coaching staff, like, they each bring something different to the table with how they talk to recruits. And like it's their little system, whatever they got cooking in coach's office is good. It's good. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, time to get into closing the bar. Mm -hmm. We want to thank the Splash Sisters for joining us. Taylor and Michaela, I mean, honestly, pleasure. Uh, first mm -hmm. guests that aren't from the athletic department or on the football team. I mean, we were like, if you're going to do somebody outside of those, it's got to be you two. Mm -hmm. um, so what? <laughs> Let the people know what's going on in your lives and how they can uh, uh, get in touch with you if they want. How they can follow along. and Or if you want them to, better question. Yeah. <laughs> how can they keep in touch? How can they, if they wanted to, like how could they follow along with, like if they wanted to follow your pro career in Europe or Australia, where could they do that too? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I'm going to be leaving for Europe in a week. So they can follow me. I know my club has a, a Facebook page. Um, it's not always in English, but you might be able to translate it. I know I saw, um, like, I, I kind of follow your, like, in, like, like Eurobasket.com or something like that. Yeah, that Eurobasket like, is, like, if you just go to Eurobasket and type in my name, like, everything will pop up. So that's a great, great start. And it's in English, so even better. <laughs> Yeah, so I would definitely go to Eurobasket. They'll have all the games, updates, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I don't have anything in the works right now. <laughs> I don't have any like contracts or anything going on like for Europe this season. It's obviously a weird like this, this whole year has just been really weird. So um, I'm hoping to go back to Australia, and I mean, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Obviously, I post. I don't post a lot on either of them, but when big things happen, I do. Um, and then, I mean, like I'm thinking, obviously me and Mike will hopefully go back to Australia and play in like the NBL one and they have Instagram, Twitter pages. They're really good about posting all sorts of stuff and mm -hmm. all the teams have Instagram pages. So there's always a way to find out where we are, but probably if you just follow us, honestly, we post, we post when uh, good things happen. Yeah. Whenever we're together, we're posting. So um, if you want to see pictures of us, follow us on Instagram. <laughs> 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 All right, well, once again, we, we want to thank you guys for coming on. It's uh, been awesome. I know it's something that a lot of our, our listeners have wanted for a while, so I'm glad we were able to do it. Uh, a blessing in disguise from COVID. It gave us time to get a lot of vandals on. Um, so hopefully all you guys out there that are listening and enjoyed this, enjoyed Max Ford, and boy, uh, enjoyed Kristen Armstrong. Let us know who else you want to hear from. It's been nice getting in touch with vandals. Make sure you follow us at Tubs at the Club. On Instagram and Twitter, you can also follow us at uh, – make sure you follow Big Sky Podcast Network. That's at Big Sky Podcast on Twitter. To follow all the BSPN happenings. Um, that's all we got for you guys. So we want to thank everybody for tuning in. And, and Martin, I'll, I'll let you say the magic words. And, <laughs> and now it's time for the best band in all the land to play us out with the beer song. Go Vandals. <laughs>